Ahoy VC, welcome to the Personal Oasis. This is the Blind Island. I'm your host Isaac and today we are going to be finishing off our part two of the 20 incredible jazz albums. I have the 10 uh, top albums here and again there's no real rhyme or reason to the listing here. It doesn't go up to greatest. It's just 20 albums that I believe would be a great entry point for people who are looking to get into jazz but haven't had the opportunity to listen to it. So let's get on to the albums listed here. At number 10, I had Herbie Hancock Thrust. And this is a fantastic album, same group that brought you Headhunters and a lot of people who, have, who love that jazz funk sound will continue to hear that here. It is so groovy, so funky, and an absolute banger of a record. Total uh, just groove and a lovely, lovely experience. Highly recommended. At number nine, I have Jim Hall Concierto. A lot of people here have probably heard of Jim Hall, but haven't really paid much attention to Jim's playing as a solo artist. An incredibly understated guitarist. He brings a lot of space in between his notes and a truly lovely bop sound to his guitar. This record right here is a phenomenal album and the main one that you want to be listening to is Concierto de Aruñez and it was made famous by Miles Davis on Sketches of Spain but I would believe that the heights of that album are matched right here on this title track joined with such a luminary such as Chet Baker, Ron Carter, Steve Gadd, and Roland Hanna Jim Hall is bringing the heat on this album, and Chet Baker's playing on here is an absolute vision of true beauty. Fantastic record, highly recommended. And at number eight, I have Thelonious Monk's Brilliant Corners. This is an absolute seminal jazz album, often listed in the top 25 ever recorded. Thelonious Monk is an artist that everyone needs to hear at least once in their life, and he is bringing the heat on the keys here. Really, really great uh, band leader, and one of the greatest jazz pianists of all time. Highly recommended listening. At number seven, I have Aman Jamal Trio's The Awakening. This album has been sampled by so many hip-hop illuminaries, and uh, primarily on Nas's Illmatic. This is a phenomenal post-bop album, and really, really lovely jazz uh, that is played on the piano. Aman Jamal was bringing a wonderful taste to the post-bop scene and this record is a huge, huge gain for anyone who is looking into the history of early hip-hop. And at number six, I have Duke Ellington and John Coltrane, self-titled. This is two jazz giants meeting the old vanguard, meeting the new school, and you can hear that John Coltrane is being incredibly respectful of Duke Ellington during this meeting of two great minds and in a sentimental mood is one of the most beautiful jazz songs ever recorded. Absolutely glistening and golden, a complete gem. This needs to be in any person's collection who wants to be taking jazz seriously. And at number five, I have Miles Davis, Sketches of Spain. I had spoken about this a little earlier with Jim, Hulk, Jim Hall's Concierto, 
but this album, I know that a lot of people have heard of Kind of Blue, and that is Miles' greatest achievement, but I think that this album matches the majesty and beauty of that record. It is a little bit larger in scope. Gil Evans is arranging on this record, and I think that the pairing of Miles Davis and Gil Evans always work to amazing dramatic effect. There is a huge dramatic flair to this record. It sounds like Spain is coming alive, and I highly recommend this for anyone who wants a little bit more of a Latin taste in their jazz music. And at number four, we have Eric Dolphy's Out to Lunch. This is the seminal avant-garde free jazz album. If you're looking to really get into it, this is the record to do it. Eric Dolphy was an incredible player, incredible arranger, and had a lot of uh, humor in his music. Even that can be told from the cover right here, as you can tell that We'll Be Back sign has multiple arrows pointing to different times, basically stating that they're out to lunch forever. And I love, love, love this record. I highly recommend it for anybody who is looking to get into the free stylings of jazz. And at number three, we have Wayne Shorter's Juju. I have shown this one a couple of times on my channel, but I have to show it again because, man, he is just swinging free on this uh, album. Very Coltrane-esque, heavy blowing on this session, and a complete darkness that is enveloped in the session as well. He is showing a lot of proclivity towards uh, heavy notes, um, blowing many different types of uh, runs at the same time, but there's also a hidden beauty in the session as well. Highly recommended for anyone who is looking for thoughtful, intelligent jazz. And at number two, I have one of my favorite albums of all time, Sonny Rollins' The Bridge. To me, Sonny Rollins is the greatest jazz saxophone player of all time. He had this golden tone to his sax that could be unmatched by anyone else. A true beauty. And this album was a comeback after Sonny had taken a retirement from playing the sax. He also was drying out from his drug habit and was seen playing at the Brooklyn Bridge every single day. And then after that, um, he was pulled back into the world of jazz. He named his comeback album, The Bridge. And Jim Hall also joins him on this record. Some of the best playing he has ever had. Fantastic record, highly recommended. And then at number one, I have Pharaoh Sanders. Uh, deaf, Dumb, Blind, and I really recommend this for anybody who is looking for free jazz light. This is a very spiritual album. This is very one that is meditative and glorious. Lots of different instrumentation being brought into effect here, as well as African uh, themes, and so just a lot of beauty and light being brought to the front. This is easily Pharaoh Sanders' most melodic release he ever came out with and is one that should be sought out by anyone who is a big collector or wanting to get into uh, spiritual jazz. So guys, that was the list. What did you think of it? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I hope that you guys have a great day on your own personal oasis. Cheers. Thank you.